it seemed like it's pretty easy to play a guitar because, uh, you know, once you know the science of it, that the high notes, the little skinny ones make high sounds, the big fat ones make low sounds, and then if you go in the, the part of the guitar near, the, near where you pluck it, that makes high sounds, and down at the other end, like, then you got it mastered. That's all you got to know. Oh, and if you want it to be fast, play fast. <laughs> and if you want to go slow, go slow. That's all there is to it. It's that easy to play guitar. Other people, some people worry about chords and stuff. You know, and, and that's all right, too. You know, there's all kinds of music in the world. Uh, you, know, you, you know, you might want to learn some other stuff if you're doing that kind of music. For what we do, for what I was doing, you know, uh, that was the beauty of it. You can learn it that first day. Well, yeah, you, you you do need chords in in order to to plug the guitar in, but but uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. All. Some people th think that it is uh, difficult to play music when, when you've never played an instrument before. Uh, I mean, I've, I had never played guitar before, I've never played drums before, um, before starting half Japanese, but on day one of uh, the beginning of the band, I was both a, a drummer, guitarist, and vocalist. And anything else, you know, I, I would put in my hands. I, I could play it and uh, play it well. When we played live, I used to carve matches in my guitar, the same way um, gunslingers do on their guns on the Western movies. Um, if, we could, if we beat the other band we were playing with, then I'd put a match in the guitar. And I'd put a match every single time we played, because there's nobody I'm scared of. We always, I mean, I'm not sure if the, everybody in the audience is going to give you the same opinion that, that we won that night, or if anyone even knew there was a contest going on. But, but I knew, and I knew we were better every time. And, I don't mean to insult anybody we ever played with because we saw some great shows too, but, but um, you know, I know I can do this better than anyone else can do exactly what I'm doing. Half Japanese were in Boston to do a show at some club, I can't remember which one, and that was their electric show one night, and then the next day they were going to do this acoustic show at the Duplex Nursing Home, and they played on the back porch of the home, and the audience was the residents of the home. This helped teach me was that the, the audience of these residents of the home are a lot more open to hearing things that are out of the ordinary for them than my own peers. sure what to, what to make of them, but they, they liked the, uh, the theatricalness of it. There was, a, there was a bit of a spectacle outside of the ordinary nursing home entertainment, which would normally be kind of somebody with a singing songs that they knew. This was kind of David sitting there with a, a, a snare drum with a towel over it and Jad playing a guitar that said Jad on it and dancing around like mad, and then Mark playing, Mark sort of holding it together by playing the chords. David are a, sort of a classical archetype. You've got the big guy and a little guy. You've got the sort of nervous, wiry guy and the big, gregarious, easygoing guy. It's, uh, you know, it's Laurel and Hardy, it's Don Quixote and Sancho Panza. It's, it's, the, it's an archetype. It's, it's a classic. Uh, one important thing I think about Half Japanese is that we, we always played the best we could. We played the, we did the best job we could, and and it's an important distinction because I heard another band cover one of our songs one time, and they did a good version of it. But what the difference is, it was people who could play good, trying to sound a little bit wacky, and we're coming from a different direction. Like you know, maybe it's wacky people, but trying to sound as good as you can, it, it, it's a big distinction. It's you know, we're not trying to sound goofy. We're making the best record we can make, and the best playing the you know absolutely the best we can. And um, I, I think that's pretty important for, you know, kids starting out. And if you've got a little band, um, you know, 
it maybe you want to try and sound goofy. I don't know. Well, you know, that's okay because it's your band, you know, and you can do that if you want. But, you know, that wasn't what our band was about, and it wasn't how we approached it. We tried to make a good record and, and do the best job you can, try and sound good. That's what we did. Half Japanese is, in fact, the band that would be king, were they given the opportunity. And what's really kind of sick about that is that is not the, uh, the hope or the the wish to be king, just to make a living and have your music heard by all the people who would like to hear it. Um, it's a wonderful album. He put that and Charmed Life out right on top of each other and they're both fabulous. And I think the band that would be king cover is the best album cover I've ever seen. I love it with it. Uh, Jad is fighting Elvis. And on the back cover, Jad wins. <laughs> You know, are half Japanese the greatest rock and roll band of all time? That's that's a that's an interesting question. Uh, looking at all the records, looking at everything they've ever done, you know, you know, on on record, in print, on stage. I mean, you could you could definitely make a case for it. It's uh, that's a tough one because sometimes you just, you just throw things like that out there just for the sake of hyperbole, just to you know start start a fight. You know, just, I, just the idea, just trying to start a fight that Jad himself would have to finish later on. If you hang that around Jad's neck, the greatest rock performer of all time, that means every time he takes the stage, he has to live up to it. And uh, I mean, I, I kind of like putting that kind of pressure on him because I think I think he can he can live up to it. I, I did did a show in uh, Berlin last year, and, and someone came up to me after the show and, and asked me if I'd ever heard of Jad Fair, and I, I told him that I had, and then he said to me that um, I sound quite a bit like Jad Farron, and, and I told him that, well, I'm, I sound exactly like Jad Farron.